February 12th, one year ago, I became very, very ill with vertigo to the point I could not get out of bed without spinning, throwing up, vomiting, nausea, motion sickness. And now it's February 6th, so almost one year I've been dealing with this. I had SCD surgery on November 12th and had hoped everything would go away. Unfortunately, during my recovery, my mother died unexpectedly on December 6th, and they postponed the funeral because of my health. And during that time, I felt like I wasn't on track with how I should be in terms of recovering because I was just crying all the time. My mother's death was totally unexpected. We thought she had at least a good 10 years left. And she lived in Arizona, so I had to fly from Oregon to Arizona. And I figured the flight, they told me, the surgeon's office had said it would make me very sick. And I just kept thinking it was the crying and my mom's dying and the flying that was making me not seem to be getting as better as I thought I should be. And also, 13 days after my mother died, a very close uncle of mine died. And then, uh, three days after my mother's funeral, the only surviving brother she had, his wife died unexpectedly. And so I really went back for my follow-up to see the doctor, I think it was at the seven or eight week point, thinking that they're just gonna tell me I'm still having all the symptoms, motion sickness, vertigo, nausea at times, confusion, um, memory loss, especially short memory loss. I thought they would just say it's because I've had what I've gone through, the constant crying and the swelling of the tissues and the stress. Um, it was It's two flights down and two flights up to my mother's, so I thought it must be because of that. Um, I just was not better and I just kept waiting for that feeling of like I'd been promised that I was probably going to feel better than new and it, it wasn't coming. I was not quite as bad as before and when I tried to think of it on that 1 to 10 scale, except for about maybe a half a dozen days since November 12th or, or the recovery, well since I was able to start standing up, um, I have never like reached a nine or a ten. It's been always more, it kind of seems to, all those symptoms seems to stop at an eight, so there seems to be a slight difference in um, my symptoms, but even just three nights ago, I, I was right up there at a ten, and I, I literally was asking people, um, my husband, I said, if you could just blow my head off, I'd let you. I go, I cannot live like this, I can't stand it. Do loud sounds bother you at all? Extremely much. I can't stand the music in the car. Um, I can't stand all these computer games my kids play. We have lots of headphones at our house. Um, even just especially noises in stores or anywhere where there's echoes just make me really sick when I say that, a headache, um, I, I don't, still don't quite what to call it, a middle ear ache that seems to spread, and a facial ache. Um, this, I didn't mention that, but that has always been part of it. And that has seemed to have been getting worse instead of better in the past month. And so it's the, the facial nerves that go around my eyes and that go down here, they are throbbing as much as my head is throbbing when I'm up at that eight point or when it gets to that really, really bad point, that nine or ten. Do the loud sounds ever make you dizzy? Yes, they do. When I walk out of like a noisy grocery store or if my um, kids are playing music and I'm trying to ignore it, all of a sudden when I walk over to tell them they've got to turn that off, I, I, I notice my vertical's there because I have a hard time walking. And how about internal sounds? Before, 
the SCD surgery, I just felt like I was sensitive to noise and light and, and motion. Whereas after the surgery, um, and this is part of my condition, I forget, I don't have a good short-term memory, so I forget the question. Are you able to hear internal sounds? Yes. So what's happened in the last month, a couple of those times I mentioned about six times when I did feel like I got back up to a nine or ten in terms of pain. And that when I say pain, that's the middle ear headache, the headache, the facial pain, just the screaming pain where I, I really would rather be dead. And if, um, one of those times I noticed when I closed my eyes, my eyes were going back and forth, I had a thought of, what was that? And then I did it again and did it several times, moving my eyes back and forth. And I thought, well, this is what I read about, that some people had this, but I had not had it before. And, and that, I really only remember having that once or twice. And it was one of those days where there'd just been way too much noise and I'd had way too much movement and too much ex exertion. And then one, um, a couple other times, um, I would hear the swishing in my ear and when I did call the office once, they suggested I keep at the 45 degree angle and that, that did seem to help with that swishing sound. But there were at least, you know, it's hard for me to count that number, uh, maybe six to ten times um, since my SCD surgery that I have felt like I hear um, the blood pumping in and out of my ear. And I didn't hear that before, but I'd read a lot about it on the internet. My husband's a doctor and I'm very academic, and so I'd read everything, and I, and I was surprised I didn't have that before. But I definitely could hear that, because I would just sit and listen to it thinking, this is what they kept writing about. What about migraine headaches? Do you ever get those? Well, um, I'm always confused if it's a migraine or what is it. I don't get the Aurora or the all the other stimulators that they say happen for regular migraines. And when they used to tell me I had atypical migraines and that's why I didn't get those. But um, when I, when I, anytime in this conversation when I've said I get a bad headache, what I, what I mean is it's a migraine. I, I have to go to a room that's dark. I have to lay down. I have to have complete quiet. In fact, I put earplugs in so I can hear nothing. And I have to rest until that calms down. And how often does that happen? Uh, <laughs> at the end of every night, really. And then it happens earlier on those days when I've um, done too much, especially grocery shopping, which I really have tried not to do more than like three times since my mom died because it makes me so sick or um, if my kids have been really loud, and if I yell at them, then that happens. Good morning. This is my first morning after um, fastidious surgery and I feel like for the first time in exactly a year, because it was a year ago the symptoms started, and also for the first time since I had the SCD surgery on November 12th, I do not feel nauseous. I do not feel like I have a horrendous hangover and drunk at the same time and that is without drinking. Um, I noticed my eye is not blurry. I've had a left eye blurry vision for a long time and I have no facial pain at all and that I've had also. Um, so I have like everything's clearer like someone put on magnifying glasses. Um, my head feels clearer, my vision's clearer. Um, when I got 
I was afraid to get up, but the vertigo would come back and the dizziness. Um, there was just a tiny bit of dizziness, but I didn't have to hold on to anything. So if I think about it, I really didn't have that usual vertigo where I'm always grabbing a wall or whatever is by me. Um, your left ear is the worst ear, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, nothing is so, right. So let me start with a bad ear, um, okay. just because if it makes My you... My husband always says that. ...makes you feel dizzy, um, yeah. then I don't want to... No, I got it. Yeah, okay. So go ahead and put these goggles on for me. Okay. So these lenses uh, prevent you from being able to focus on anything. Oh, yes. But they have uh, lights in there that let you watch your eye movements. And there's some real characteristic... I've eye... never worn these kind before. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to put this cold spectrum in your ear canal. Okay. And so there's some real characteristic eye movements that happen. Can I push this up? Yeah, my nose would. There you go. Okay. And so it's important for you to keep your eyes open while I do this. Mm -hmm. And then I just need you to tell me if you feel dizzy at all or feel any tilting, anything of that nature. You ready? Mm hmm. I'm going to start with this bad ear first. Does that bother you? Yeah, a little. Making you dizzy? Uh, it just went right to my stomach, a little. Did it yeah. nausea? Just a tiny bit. Do you feel any tilting? I'm going to uh, give you more pressure now. Okay. Does that bother you more? Yeah. Just a, it's slight, but it's it a does. slight tilting. Yeah, okay. very slight. I'm going to give you even more pressure now. Okay. Is that worse? Yeah, but it's not unbearable if it. Okay. But definitely there. Yeah. All right. So now that I've done the bad ear, let me come around to the other side. Okay. And I'm going to just test the, the good ear. Now with this, since it's the good ear, I wouldn't expect that you're going to have any dizziness with this, but you might. So just let me know. Is it different than the left ear? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thanks so much. Go ahead and take those off. Okay.